What's up, guys? Zade here with the most famous Fluanderies <laughs> player ever. My boy, David Hernandez, who just got fourth place at Lock Haven Regionals. We about to get that deck profile. But before we get into it, more exciting news. Quick shout out from our newest sponsor, Tsunami Mats. Use promo code ZadeSlater5 to get 5% off your Tsunami Mat play mats. But now, Dave, take the floor. Let's see what you did. All right, we got fourth place playing the best bird deck. Uh, we got... Stand. Oh, you! Oh, you played uh, uh, what's that card? <laughs> Lear Lust Driver Gate. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> Those cards suck. Um, Bird Engine, uh, almost standard. I think most people are playing one of this, but yeah, these eight are standard. Yeah, yeah these eight are the standard. David like special. One, yeah, still playing the one extra street. I want to see a bird with a map, uh, and then other standard cards. Berry statue, two empin is basically standard now. Ryza, and then three shifter. Yo, this mat looks good in the background. Actually, <laughs> that shit's clean. Uh, these are all basically standard. The only n not standard Flunderies monster is Snow. Um, this card, I I'm also not playing Apex Avion actually, which is like important. I was siding it out a lot going second, and I never really needed it. Like going first, most of the games ended like with a Ryzo or an M pin. Did um, you miss it in the mirror against back row decks? I felt like that was where it shined most for me. Against back row decks, not really. I haven't missed it against the mirror. I didn't miss it, but I've I've only played two mirrors since I've cut Apex Avion and I won both of them. Um, so I maybe I'd play it for that, but right now I'm not playing it at all. Uh, against back row decks, usually I just like kind of. Stick barrier statue with the tributes on their turn, and then hopefully that gets me there. Because they, they usually have to like flip a skill drain, have another card to like trigger a torrential. Because I'm not going to summon under five back row, yeah. so they have to have like a three card hand to like beat the barrier statue on the board. So the Apex Avion, like, I guess makes that harder, but I, I didn't miss it really. Uh, and Snow, I think Snow does like so much, it attacks over Griffin without like using any effects. Uh, the three normals actually mattered a lot, uh, as you'll see in the extra deck, but I, I played Underworld Goddess, and I needed, um, they left this on board. When it came back to my turn, I used this effect to give me three normals. It doesn't lock you. None of the tributes lock you. Um, so I normal three little birds and then use them all for Underworld Goddess <laughs> to get rid of a final Sigma. So it actually mattered a lot. Um, so that's it for the monsters. Uh... Non-negotiable spell cards, six, the the six best bots, three map and three, quick play. Um, is there a Terra too or no? Yeah, there's a terraforming. I just had it in like. But these are the ones that every list this is a standard. Yeah, this is like you never play anything less than this. These are the best spells. For a little bit, I cut one because I was playing the terraforming, but I didn't want to play four map. Oh, you cut a oh you cut a map. Yeah, but I I don't know if that was right. I don't yeah, know if that was right. I, I don't think so. I think you have to play the three O's. And then um, other spell cards I played were three Dark Rule. This is like the last three O's. This card was like, I never drew it actually. Like the entire regional, I didn't draw this card once. Um, so I couldn't tell you really how like it performed. I obviously didn't need it. <laughs> <laughs> and in theory, I like still kind of like it, but I've like sort of considering maybe cutting this and moving like imperm to the main only because i want a card that's like good drawing as your sixth card and this card's like really good at drawing your sixth card but there's like a lot of boards that just like don't ha really have like much interaction they're ending like despio like they have a mirror jade if it's like the pure and like brandon red this is like gonna do negative things against them doesn't really trade well in the mirror match either yeah it's like so the only matchup i like this is uh the like the rose dragon synchro deck like that 40 45 card deck because they all end on like a baron a griffin sometimes a griffin if their hands like really good and like a dpe so like you go one for three against that deck and it's like really good even like with a one for two but um that's kind of like the only matchup i really like it so it might be moved to the side uh two book of moon um i kind of want it back at three <laughs> i was playing two and i just like didn't see it that much it just feels like every time I see this, like, going first, I, I usually win. And going second, it's, like, always going to trade in the gate, which is, like, really good because you can 
like the boards are ending usually like two interaction. You get rid of one, you stick a map, get rid of the other, and then stick a normal summon Robina and the game's over. I remember I tried playing a regional without this card. I don't remember what place I got. I think it was like 13, 14. But like I was playing Imperm instead. And in theory, that just seems wrong the more I think about it. Because this equally trades with the Negate going second. I liked Imperm because you could hit like an Anaconda, but that doesn't feel like it does much. But going first, this is like a much higher impact interruption against a lot of decks. Yeah, this, and it dodges the hand trap. Yeah, it dodges hand trap. It's a, it's like, it dodges hand traps. It's an interruption versus a lot of decks. So it's like the Book of Moon like matters a lot. They don't get the link or synchro, and also like, if you if you have open like Map Bird and have like the Empa and Barrier Statue board, if you have a Book of Moon on top of that, there's like nothing they can do. They can't get, like, Griffin off the top special and, like, go to battle phase. You just, like, Book of Moon and the game's over. So, like, I think I want to bump Book of Moon back up to three. In the great hands, it solidifies it. In the good hands, it plays their hand traps. In the bad hands, it could even be a good enough interruption for them to pass and you just, like, try yeah. again next turn. Uh, and then the one of... I guess it should have been earlier, but... I played the one pot of Extravagance. This is what I cut Apex Avion for. I just wanted, like, another consistency card. Um, I don't know if I'd bump it up more... I, there were, like, a couple times where I'd, like, extra and then draw into, like, Prosperity or something. That felt bad. Yeah, it's just upstart Goblin at yeah. that point because you don't get to use the Pros. Yeah, so, like, I, I think the one-up was, like, probably fine. I didn't brick... I don't think I bricked once, actually, at the region. I drew, like, mediocre hands, but they, were, they all still played. Uh, and then the one unexplored wins. Some people are cutting this. Um... I just think it does way too much. There's, like, so many times where... Even, even like, hands, like, if you even, like, broken a open like a broken hand like especially like post game one you could just like search this off the end pin and then like add all your birds back and then just like get two free draws to try and draw like a feather storm or something like that yeah draw the blowout just yeah. like end the game for sure uh and then like this guarantees that you like kill through anything like even if like you're playing against like the brave end they have like token griffin and like some other thing in defense like if you get this on your turn like you can usually just like play through everything and, like or just like force in a gate because if they don't negate this, then you're just going to, like, tribute off their whole board, usually. Because everything's chain blocked after turn one. So, I don't think I would cut it. Uh, and then, one Terra is, like, the fourth map. And then one Mystic Mine. So, there's, like, two Mystic Mines in the main deck. Um, this card has been really good in testing against, like, Despia. And then even, like, the decks that just like, end on, like, DP and, like, a Griffin or whatever. You bait, you bait them, and then, like, if you don't have a bird play, then you just stick this. If they don't have the Draco back, then they deck out. If not, and also, like, if they have three monsters and you can stick this mine, then your whole play goes, like, uninterrupted. They have, like, nothing that can interact with you except for, like, a droplet or, like, a set imperm. Dude, the three monster mystic mine feels like an FTK. I did that, like, one game where I was using Ryza, and you just, like, stack their dead yeah. draws infinitely. The game, it, it just ends. Yeah. The rest of the game's a formality at that point. You feel so safe. Like, you just, like, normal Robina, and it's like, you don't even look at your opponent. You just, like, go, go on your deck, and you grab all your cards. The, the, is there a world where this deck could play set rotation? There, I don't know. I, I was thinking about it earlier today, because I was watching a DB Grinder video where they were talking about it in a, I think in a Brave, like, that where they would use the equip spell, bounce the spell they set, but you could do that with Ryza. You could, like, give them Mystic Mine, bounce the Mystic Mine with Ryza, and now it's like, break my board. If you yeah. don't, you die. There's, uh, there was, I think Raphael Nevin was playing. Yeah, that's the deck profile yeah. I watched, actually. He was playing Prank, and he played it. Yeah, he was playing Prank, and he played it. He, I think... They loved the card. Yeah, I think he really liked it, actually. He, like, cut, I think he cut, like, a Mystic Mine from his deck, and it, like, mattered. But, yeah, I, I don't know if... It might be good in here. It really depends. Like, if, if this card significantly starts to, like, shine... I haven't gotten, like, as much testing against Despy as I want. Uh, but if this card, like, significantly shines more, then I'd probably consider playing it. Uh, and then the last spell is Feather Duster. I love this card. Yeah, there's... I mean, there's, like, just... At regionals, there's, like, random decks everywhere. Like, people just... Random Zombie Eldritch deck playing... Like, main decking Zombie World... I want to have an out to that. Uh, that's, like, another reason to play this is, like, it, because I play these two, if you don't play these, you basically, like, auto auto scoop to a skill drain. Like, you have, like, no way to out it. So if you play against Eldritch, you're just going to lose game one. Like, if you if you lost the die roll, you're just going to lose. And that's not a deck you want to uphill battle with because they yeah. just, like, flip their can and it's like, oh. Yeah, like, if any, like, Floodgate deck, you're just going to auto-lose, and I don't really want to concede my game ones to a die roll. So, like, especially keeping this, it's searchable. 
and like Duster, even like a deck that's not a backhoe deck. They have Fateful Adventure, they have Draco back, and they set one card. They're one of Droplet that they played. Play this. No, you hit the follow up and a negate. Yeah, like, it's, it, it, this card has like always been good for me. When I picked up Bird, you told me to play that card, and then I've never cut it out of any list. Yeah, that card is insane. And you hit it off Prosperity Duality. It's like most of the time you just don't take it, but sometimes you take it and it's literally game yeah. changing. Even like when I, like in testing, I'm, sometimes I draw this and I'm like, oh, this kind of sucks. And then they like set Droplet Fateful, and I do this and like. Sometimes they'll even bait in a gate because they want their, like, back row that bad. And, like, if they don't bait it, then you... If you get rid of a droplet, because droplet's, like, really strong against this drop deck. Droplet send a spell, like, can sometimes just, like, kill you. So, like, this clearing a droplet is, like, super important. I, I liked it a lot. And then the one Dreaming Town. Never never more than one. I played two with a uh, side deck, uh, what's the card called? Trap Trick before. It didn't really feel like it was it. <laughs> Uh, extra deck really quick. Um, yeah, these cards matter oh yeah, so much. <laughs> Maximus cards, uh, Zeus cards, uh, up to two Zeus because of extra. Uh, Ferrigeet never made it. The half Maximus card. This never made it. Uh, this can come up to like out zombie world and there can. Never made these, never made this, never made this, made this. This gave me a game in the last round. The most against, important game. Yeah, this gave me the the game last round against the VW player. Was it game two or three? It was game two. I 2 owed him. Ah, yeah, get he, shit on VW yeah. player. <laughs> he, just, he ended on, like, Baron, uh, Final Sigma, and I went, like, Pod Duality, saw Book of Moon. Uh, so it was just, like, Book of Moon, Baron. And then I just committed my tributes on his turn. I summoned literally every tribute in my deck he chose the wrong one to attack over uh so snow normal three and then killed him <laughs> win the game yeah uh, that's another like advantage to snow though is nobody's used to playing against it because most players don't play it yeah and no uh, most people have to like pick it up and read it every single time i play it they're like you play this card and i'm like yes and they're, like, <laughs> they like never understand they're like, what is it? What does it do? I'm like, Book of Eclipse, and then I, yeah, I'm like, yes, I get two Book of Eclipse on your turn, and it's like, and it gives me three normals, and it doesn't specify Wing Beast actually. So, uh, in the side deck, I'm playing um, Phantasme. This was like kind of like secret sauce in the deck that I figured out a while ago. Yeah, this um, was pre Quick Play that you played this at first, right? Yeah, I played this like yeah before Quick Play because I was like breaking a lot. So that in theory, I played this in the main deck. Um, but I started playing this when, like, Prank Kids was really popular because they usually normal summon, link off, and chain block with a Faithful Adventure. So you stick this, uh, when they summon the Meow Meow before there's a Griffin on board. So this is, like, a pseudo shifter because you can draw shifter at that point when they have, like, Prank Meow. And it does the same thing if you, like, did it on their normal summon. If anything, it's, like, more impactful because they got rid of the Meow. Mm-hmm. Um, and now if they link it away, it's, like, gone, gone. Yeah. They don't so, get to recycle it. So, like, this against, like, the Prank Kids matchup is, like, very good. And even, like, like almost every Brave deck, because they all, like, make DP, you stick this, almost no one is going to negate this. And at worst, at worst, this is going to fix your hand. Because you're drawing two and putting one back. And at best, like, you're sticking this on the Anaconda, you draw into a shifter, and then they definitely have to negate it, or else they lose their DP. It's also, like... It protects from Veil or Imperm. It's a tribute if you're only Starter's Eaglin. Like, it just does a lot. Yeah, I, I love this card. Sadly, I literally never drew it. I sided it in every time, like, going second almost, and never drew it. Damn. Like, at other regionals, I did draw it, and it was, like, really good for me. But at the past two regionals, I haven't drawn it. Goddamn um, RNG. Yeah, so Phantasme. Uh, we have three Droll. This is basically only for the Mirror. I was playing Lancia, but Lancia felt like not enough. And it, it also, like, PK is not in the format, so that didn't matter. This could, this theoretically, actually, this came in for one other matchup. I played against Drytron, and this ended their turn. Do you, if you're siding that in, I'm assuming against, like, a Drytron deck, you're still keeping Shifter? Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, because both of them will end the turn. So if you Shifter them, then it, you hold Droll, and then just, like, end the next turn? Yeah, if I have both of them, I just do Shifter, because it, like, means they're not doing anything. Like, they can't diviner. They can't, like, do basically anything without just, like, throwing the game. So then it, like, won't matter. Usually I'll just, like, have that and, like, a Robina and the game will be over. If I draw both of them. I never drew both of them, though. I always drew, like, one or the other. But I barely side this in. Like That's the dream. <laughs> it's, it's only for the uh, the mirror and, I guess, dry Um, The 
two Mystic Mine and Unexplored Winds. Um, this is for back row decks, basically, in the mirror. That's like, I think that's really all I ever cited this in for. And then the two Mystic Mine. Uh, this was like for Despia, like in testing, it was like really good against Despia. Uh, other than Why that. Why is that? Because they typically only end their end board with one monster, right? Like the standard end boards of Mirror Jade, or maybe Mirror Jade Draco, or maybe Mirror Jade Oliver. Yeah, against pure, like I said, I, I haven't tested enough. Like, mm -hmm. but the brave version of it, this is more impactful because they have the token, they have Griffin, and they have the Mirror Jade. So you can like book Griffin, activate that, win the yeah. game. Yeah. So you have like one one way to interact with the Griffin, like one way to negate it, and then you'd stick this, and then it's it's like been really good there. You can either like sit on it if you out of like the Draco back, or you just like try to play under it. If you have like this this and this game one like. It's you insane. Know, yeah, it's insane. Because that way you can just play under the mine the whole time. Especially, like, if you start with Eaglin. Um, yeah, I don't know how I feel about this. I would have to test more. I, I don't think it ever came in. I don't... I think I activated it once, the whole regional, baited in a gate. So, it was, like, <laughs> it was good for that, I guess. Wait, um, is your main deck one also gold? No, it's secret. Ah, oh, so you know which one you drew. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um... Three twins. Uh... Twin is, like, insane right now. You can't play an event without this card, yeah, I think. Yeah, Twin's so good. Yo, right no now. way! You're playing the two common, one super? I play two common, one super! <laughs> this is literally just what I found on my desk. <laughs> I, I was pissed because I found, like, three first ed super ones, but I haven't been bothered enough to change them. <laughs> uh, for the mirror, this card's insane. Uh, prank kid, back row. Oh, my God. One game, I... So I cut Call by the Grave entirely from the deck. I'm probably going to put it back in. But I cut it entirely from the deck for this event. And against Prank Kid going first, I didn't know what else to put in. I just like put in Featherstorm over the Dark Ruler. And I was like, I guess I'll cut something. I'll put one Twin Twister. And I drew it. And then my turn passed because they had like Veil or Ash. And I was just like kicking myself the whole time. Because I was like, if this was Call by the Grave, I would have just like ended the combo and the game would have been over. So I just, like, had this, and, like, Unexplored wins again. I just, like, passed my turn with, like, Rubina Eaglin. He goes, thank God he doesn't have Brave Engine. He ends on, like, Prank Combo plus DP. Draw phase, my turn, I top deck Prosperity. I go Twin and stand my face, hit his two back row. Prosperity for Rubina, and I won the game. <laughs> I was like, no way, I was, like, complaining about, like, drawing this, and then it won me the game. So Who it's, needs like, called by? Yeah, it, it's insane against Prank. And also, like, I was citing this in a lot going second because there are so many zombie worlds in the room. Like, every deck. Like, even if they, like, couldn't search, like, prank kids, like, they just play, like, the terraforming and the set rotation. They just have, like, four or five copies of it. So, I, I like, saw so many zombie worlds, so I was just, like, putting this in because I was scared of everyone just sticking a zombie world because I just died. So, another benefit to the main deck duster, too. Yeah, like... The, that's one slot that you don't have to be siding in and out to yeah. that but you like still have an out and that out's insane because it also checks their imperms mm -hmm. or their droplets yeah the zomb zombie worlds are like everywhere so i could never like cut this card for a second i thought like cosmic but i think it's this card's like too versatile to like and the mere cosmic, cosmic ain't enough yeah and then against the like the the, br the prank decks the cards yeah. this card shines the most Cosmic's not enough, and against, like, yeah. back row decks, it's not enough. It's I was thinking Cosmic only because, like, Despio, they'll, like, typically, like, set one thing. But, like, if it's only for that matchup, I'd rather just play the, the Twin Twisters. Yeah, when it hoses versatile. every other deck. Yeah, it's, it's way too versatile. And then the obvious last three The blowout skips. going first card. Yep, turn skips. I drew this once, I think. <laughs> hey, but they didn't play that turn. Yeah, they definitely did not. <laughs> Actually, I think I drew it twice, and both of them were in the same game. Uh, so they, they, that guy really didn't yeah, play. Yeah, they had two turn skips, and they they just died. Uh, that's yep. That's the deck profile. I you got think. anything else you want to say? Any closing thoughts? Any shout outs? Your matchups? Anything? Um, anything you want to document for eternity for your <laughs> first top eight? Uh, don't say that. Um, <laughs> no, not really. I think um, I'm probably I'm content with like most of this list. Like I said, like the dark ruler might be good on this side and play imperm. I don't know what I'd cut for it, though. Maybe the Mystic Mine. I just, like, need to test more against Despia, I think. I guess so we should probably end the video and play some Despia. Yeah, yeah, probably. All right, well, thank you, Dave, for letting me juice your first top for content. And see you later, guys.